This is the hour of grace. God has nailed every cross on the cross for you. The snare is broken. Hour of Grace with Pastor Sonny O'Woke. Tune in for more expository, inviting and refreshing word from the throne of grace. Hour of Grace, transforming lives. The theme for this particular meeting, like you know, is By My Spirit. We shall take our text from the book of Zechariah chapter 4. We'll read verse 6 and 7. Zechariah 4, 6 and 7. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. I pray the Lord will grant you revelation. Life is full of challenges. The human tendency is to quickly rely on might or power to meet those challenges, to solve those problems. We quickly run to what we think we have. That is the natural human tendency. Like we rely on physical power, we rely on intellectual power. We rely on financial power or political power to meet some of those challenges that life will throw from time to time to us. However, there are challenges that will defy whatever power you think you can muster. And it may be in any area of life. For example, you may think you have political power you know the president, he can give you leverage. With that connection, you can solve a lot of your problems. There was this situation, someone that knew the president went, sought for his favor. The president agreed to grant his request. And he gave the instruction that the letter granting the request should be written. Of course, you can imagine how that man rejoiced. The letter was written, put on the table of the president. The next morning, he was to come and pick up the letter. The president died the previous night. And all that political power that he thought he had came to naught. A wealthy man who was afflicted with an illness that he needed to take care of, mustered his financial power, went to the best hospital to meet with one of the best doctors so as to take care of him medically. But when he got there, after all that they could do, they came with announcement that medical science could not solve his problem. So all his financial power could not help him. So that is to show that even when we think we have the power, many a times our power may not help us. Our power may fail us. That was why God said, it's not by mind, nor by power, but by my spirit. The power that cannot fail. The power in the spirit of God can never disappoint you. If God tells you, forget the problem, truly forget the problem. 
If God tells you, go and sleep, go and sleep. Nothing will disrupt his promise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Every mountain, no matter how intimidating, every mountain, no matter how protracted it may be, no matter how unprecedented, must bow. Amen. Must bow. Amen. Before God Almighty. Amen. When the Spirit of God is out, every other mountain must bow. Amen. Every mountain will become a piece of cake before the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I've told this story before, I will tell it again. There was this young man. He was arrested in the United States. Tried for committing a crime that he didn't know anything about. And the capital punishment was given to him. He was sentenced to death. He was in the death row waiting for execution. But the mother knew that the son didn't commit the crime. They did everything they could do. They explored the legal option, all the legal power thrown in, all the courts to the apex court, Supreme Court. He was convicted. Nothing could be done. They began to explore options for clemency. All the powers they could muster, nothing could be done. Every attempt failed, the young man was meant to die. And the days were drawing close for his execution. And it became a matter of hours. You know how it is. After several years, months, weeks, now you're counting days. About a day or two before the execution or so, the mother heard that a man of God Reverend Schambach was having a camp meeting somewhere. He ran in desperation. He interrupted the meeting and told the man of God, they're about to fry my son for a crime he didn't commit. The man of God looked at her, somehow believed her, and called her and said, come. He called the congregation, let us pray. He used a colloquial expression in America. He said, let us pray that the Holy Spirit will seek them. You know what it means? S-I-C-K. Seek them to confession. Whoever they were, whoever it is that has committed this crime, that this boy is about to be killed, let the Spirit of God put that person to so much trouble of heart that that person will run out to confess. We've tried all the powers, legal power, the power for clemency. We have done everything. The NGOs, they pulled their stunts and everything. They've all failed. But there is one power that cannot fail. <laughs> Let's resort to the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. Let's invoke the Spirit of God. The very person that committed that crime. Let the Spirit of God visit that person. If that person comes out, that's the only thing that will save this boy. They were counting hours. The meeting closed. And that night, the power that does not fail <laughs> went to work. Hallelujah. The young man that committed that crime could not sleep that night. The Spirit of God began to vex his soul. The Spirit of God brought conviction. The weight was so much. The young man woke up. He took the phone. He began to make frantic calls to police, to everywhere. He was telling them. By the time he told the police how he committed the crime and gave them some of the details that nobody knew, Ah, they knew he was the one that committed the crime. They quickly called the governor, began to call everybody. Do you know, just a few hours before this boy's execution, the phone rang at the prison, at the death row, 
And the governor says, stop execution. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Let me tell you, why will you have such a great partner and still be groping in the dark? Why? What, how do you explain it? You can't explain it. In Romans chapter 8 verse 31, Romans 8 31, the word of God says, If God is for us, who can be against us? Who? No mountain can be against you. Hallelujah. If you come back to the text we took, Zechariah 4, 6 and 7. I want you to look at a few things there. Look at that verse 7. Did you notice that even before Zerubbabel was here to wrap his mind around how to lay the first brick of that temple that looked like an intimidating mountain, God was talking about the capstone. Do you know what the capstone represented? The last brick. The last brick. Zerubbabel felt intimidated at the, at, the, at the mountain that was before him. The rebuilding of that temple was like a big mountain before Zerubbabel. Before Zerubbabel could lay the first brick, God was talking about the last brick. What does that show you? <laughs> that mountain before you, I want to assure you, God is talking about your testimony. God is seeing the song you will choose during your thanksgiving. The choir of heaven, they are humming that song right now. Your song of thanksgiving, the choir of heaven is humming it. Oh, I pray that God will circumcise your ears. I pray that God will circumcise your ears. What you should hear now is the song for your thanksgiving. Amen. That mountain will be brought down in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, that mountain will be brought down in Jesus' name. Amen. They believe, they believe, that's all. If you will believe, God will give it to you. I say he will give it to you. Whether the devil likes it or not, the Lord will give it to you. Look at how that verse 7 started. Look at how that verse 7 started. Who are you, O great mountain? Who are you? God did not say, what are you? Didn't you notice that? Didn't you notice that? He said, who are you? God saw a personality. He saw the spirit behind that mountain. Hey. Ah. The one that created all spirits. Kai. He saw the spirit behind that mountain. Who are you? Oh great mountain. Before put your name there. Who are you? God told that mountain, he said, listen, you shall become a play. Yeah. Ah, yesterday you were a great mountain. Today you become. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want you to begin to see with the eyes of faith. Begin to see with the eyes of faith. What is that intimidating mountain before you? What is it? Begin to see that mountain turning to a plane. You are going to build on it. Kai, I want people to connect with what God is saying. I want you to connect with what God is telling you this morning. Listen. 
It was a mountain. You could not see beyond it. It was intimidating. It looks unprecedented, protracted. It looks so intimidating. But God is saying, you will become a plain. Oh, you mountain. You know why? Because Zerubbabel was to build on it. I have a message for you. I say, I have a message for you. You also will build on it. I say you will build on it. That mess will become your message. On that mess, you will build your message. That is what God is saying. That is what God is saying. By my spirit, it shall come to pass. By my spirit, it shall come to pass. It is heartwarming to know that when the temple was completed, the people cried out, grace, grace. Hallelujah. What effectively they were saying was, it was grace and grace alone. It was grace and grace alone. They were confirming it is not by might, nor by power. It is by his spirit. Hallelujah. May you have the same disposition. You know when footballers are playing the square goal, some of them will just open their shirt. Inside on their shirt they will write, why me? Why me? In other words, why is it I'm the only one scoring goals? For them, it is by power. For you, your shirt, when you expose it, it will be grace, grace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Grace, grace. Telling the world it is by grace and grace alone. May that be your testimony in Jesus' name. It's not by power, it's not by might. It is by his spirit. Hallelujah. Let's quickly go to the book of Luke chapter 1. We'll look at just two verses and take some few principles and we shall be praying. Luke chapter 1. We read verse 34 and 35. Luke 1, 34 and 35. A very familiar story we all know. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Hallelujah. How can this thing be? That was the question asked. Mary asked that question. Mary was justified to ask the question. Because what she was told was unprecedented. It had never happened in the history of the world. That a, ma a woman will give birth to a child. Without the companionship and participation of a man. It has never happened before. It has ever happened before that a virgin will give birth to a child. When Mary was told that that was going to happen, ah, she was a virgin, she had not married, and she was told, you are going to say, how can this thing be? God was not angry with her. She asked a, a, a reasonable question, and God gave her the answer. And what was the answer? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. God is telling you the same thing today. I say God is telling you the same thing today. The Holy Spirit will come and take control. You will go out of the equation. You will go out of the line. You will step aside. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God will take control. That is what God is saying. 
Yes. You know, sometimes we go through the motions of prayer, the motions of fasting, vigil. We confess even scriptures, but we are afraid. Why? Because the challenges facing us that are asking all these same questions. You are praying over something, but that problem is asking you, how can this thing be? Have you not gone to the doctor? Didn't you go to a second doctor? Didn't you go to the third doctor? Have they not confirmed? How can this thing you're saying be? You are confessing by his stripes, I was healed. And the medical report is asking, how can it be? Can't you see they say it's a terminal cancer? Can't you see they've told you that people don't survive this? Mary faced an unprecedented challenge. It had never happened in the history of the world and it will never happen again in the history of the world. But because the Holy Spirit overshadowed her, it happened. It happened. So, when the challenges of life ask you, how can this thing be? When in the spirit of unbelief, you ask yourself, how can this thing be? Hey! When all the people that ought to even help you, they are the ones asking you the same question, how can this thing be? Friends, they may mean well, but they're asking you this question, how can this thing be? They may wake you up in the night. What they have said may wake you up in the night and ask you, how can this thing be? Maybe in your health, maybe in your spiritual life, you've never experienced victory. Maybe in your finances, the creditors are closing in on you. Maybe in your academics, you study and study and it appears that you cannot grasp anything. The question, if you listen carefully, you may hear it. How can this thing be? Mary got the answer in verse 35. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. You can tell that intimidating, unprecedented, and protracted mountain. The Spirit of God will answer you. The Spirit of God will answer you. That question you're asking me, the Spirit of God will answer you. You can also relay the response of the Spirit of God to that mountain. The response God gave in that book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7. That is the word of the Lord for you. You can take it and relay to that mountain staring you at the face. You can relate to that mountain asking you, how can this thing be? And you will ask that mountain, who are you, oh great mountain? Before you put your name there, you shall become a plain. That is my answer for you. You are asking me, how can this thing be? You mountain, you will become what? A plain. I will build on you. My testimony will rest on you. I will rejoice and dance. Where you are standing today, that is where I'm going to build my testimony. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Yes, you may be here and you're saying, Oh, pastor, my situation is unique. You don't know my own situation. My situation is unprecedented. Let me tell you, the situation Mary faced was also unprecedented. That did not stop her miracle. Amen? Amen. God did it for Mary, God will do it for you. Amen. God did it for Zerubbabel, God will do it for you. Amen. All you need to do is to be his child. That is the only qualification God is asking of you. Just to be his child. If you are his child, you are qualified. You can put your name there. If you are not his child, you can put your name as much as you want. It will not work for you. The devil will even know that you are not qualified. 
But once you are a child of God, boldly put your name there. Boldly put your name there. It will work for you. The Lord will answer your prayer. Let me tell you, as his child, first qualification, all you need to do is to be able to do what he wants you to do. Believe in him. Put your trust in him. Pray with faith. Rely on him. Make yourself available for that miracle. That's all. When we say, leave it to the spirit of God, we are not saying that you should be spiritually lazy. We are not encouraging spiritual laziness. No. You must be spiritually sensitive and active. You pray by faith. You believe God. You make yourself available. If you are not here right now, you won't hear what I'm saying. Am I correct? You have made yourself available. You can hear. Go and do what the Lord is asking you to do. Are you here this morning? If you are not a child of God, that is where to start. You must start by becoming his child. Only the child of God can appropriate what we are talking about in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7. If you are not a child of God, you cannot appropriate it. You are not born again? Say this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Right with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want us to pray or counsel you, please call. He's been knocking for so long Can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him knocking? You can visit us at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, House of Grace, 55 Estate Road, Oji, Port Harcourt. Thank you for watching.